Hi folks! In this video I'm going to sew this tea towel topper. I think they make wonderful gifts. So before I start cutting on my maker with Design Space, I wanted to show you what fabric I'm going to be using. Once again, this fabric looks quite bright, like a cherry red on camera, but it's actually a deep burgundy, very close to the color of the trim on this towel. I guess my camera just picks up colors a little differently. If you're going to be using a 24 inch mat, you want to cut one piece of fabric that's eight or nine inches wide by 19 to 20 inches long. And that will be enough to make the front and back of the flap that goes on top of your towel. If you're using um, a 12 inch mat, you're going to need two pieces that are eight or nine by nine or 10. Just a nice square, you'll need two pieces for a 12 inch mat. And I would use fusible interfacing, light to medium on one of those pieces. But I put my interfacing away somewhere and I can't find where I put it. So for this demo, I'm just going to use some thin batting that I did find. It's, it's batting for apparel. It's not really bulky like cotton batting. Um, it's a thin polyester batting, so I'm going to use that for this demo. But I would suggest light to medium interfacing, but only on one piece. You don't need it on both. So for the towel, this towel, this tea towel, is actually 28 and a half inches when it's all in one piece. I cut it in half in the middle, preserving the finished bottom on it. I like this bottom. If you don't like it and you want to add ruffles or whatever, you can always cut off whatever trim you have on yours. So I've cut that in half so I have enough to make two if I want to make a set. And you can choose to do a basting stitch at the top of yours and then pull it to ruffle the top or pre prepare ruffles however you like to do it. But for this one, I've chose to pleat it. So I've just used a good amount of steam. I folded it to six inches wide, maybe a little narrower, and I've used a wonder clips to hold it in place. And then I used my steam iron to give it a really good press so it holds well while I assemble it. This clip should be holding both pieces. There we go. So I have that all ready to be inserted. And if you are going to pleat it or even ruffle it, I suggest um, pressing it so it's nice and neat when you're working with it. If it's all wrinkled and bunched up, it's a little difficult to work with. So that's all you're going to need. I'm going to get these cut out on my Cricut Maker and we'll start assembling. And we're back and we're ready to assemble. So you can see that I've cut my pieces out with my Cricut Maker. I prefer to press a quarter to a half inch, usually a half inch for something like this, along the bottom before I sew my sides. I find it's a lot easier to get it even on both pieces if I do it before. And it's easier than trying to tuck it afterwards and press it. So I've done that in advance. Also, this batting that I'm using, I don't want to put on my mats. It's fluffy, and I don't want to make that kind of a mess with it. So I've cut it by hand, and I've cut it about a half inch shorter, so that when I do tuck this inside, I don't have too much bulk and make it difficult to insert the towel and um, get anything bunching up. So I didn't want that to happen. So I'm putting my batting down. I'm putting one of the fabrics with the good side facing up and the second fabric with the good side facing down onto it. So now I'm going to sew a quarter inch seam allowance along all 
the sides except the bottom. We of course need to leave the bottom open so we can insert, insert the towel. So I'm going to go ahead and get that done and we'll move on to the next step. Okay, so we're back and I've done the seam all around the sides and of course leaving the bottom open. And you can see where I've made my, in, my batting just a little shorter so that I reduce bulk on that. So I'm also going to trim up my seam allowance a bit. So I get a cleaner finish or cleaner edges when I reverse it. Try to get that nice and straight. There we go. We also want to take off any points. You can just clip those off. You can do this with scissors if you prefer. little edge there that's all nice and neat should take off this little edge too although it's so tiny I'm not sure that I even need to but for good measure we'll take that off okay so the next thing we're going to do is turn this right side out Make sure you push out all your little corners so it's nice and neat. I like to use a paintbrush to do that because the ends are round so I know there's no risk of poking through my fabric. There we go. That's all ready. And eventually we're going to top stitch around it, but not yet because I don't want to reduce the size that I have to put my towel in. So I'll do that all at once. When I insert the towel and stitch along, I'll also top stitch all the way around. But for now, I'm just going to be careful to roll out all these sides. And I'm going to press it nice and flat. There we go. I'll press nice and flat. And the next thing that we're going to do is insert our towel. I'm going to um, just add some pins to it to make sure nothing moves because I want my pleats nice and straight. But you should, if you're doing um, a ruffle, you will have a basting stitch along that will keep everything in place. And actually you can do a basting stitch on pleats also, of course, to keep it nice and straight. That looks like it should hold in place while I do this. I think I'll put one more there. Okay, take off our clips. And we're just going to insert it. So you want to go about a half inch in to make sure that you'll be grabbing all the fabric Try to keep it nice and even. That looks good. And we're going to pin it on. Oh, we're going through a lot of layers. There we go.
you want to make sure the towel is deep enough in so that you will grab it when you do your top stitching. There we go. And this is going to be folded over with a nice little snap or button once we get finished. So now I'm going to do the top stitching. Maybe put another pin through here just to make sure that everything gets caught in the stitching. That looks nice and straight. This will flatten out as I remove the pins. And I should remove this tag also afterwards. So that's it. I'm going to start my top stitching. Oh, I should have mentioned when you sewed the sides of this topper, you want to make sure to back stitch at both ends so that um, you don't pull it apart when you're inserting your towel. Make sure that's all good. Okay, so I'm going to start here and go all the way around all the sides so that it has top stitching and looks finished. I'll remove my pins as I go, press it very flat, and then we'll install our snap. And we're back, and we're just about done. So you can see that I've done my top stitching around, and I've also sewn twice across this edge. I hope you can see it so that I know that the towel is really nice and secure and I'm not worried about it falling off when I give it as a gift. That would be disastrous. So now all we have left to do is install our snap or you, if you prefer to use a button. So I'm just going to mark out where I'd like to have it. I think around here would be nice. So I will put my snap, center it, and put it two up and in the middle. So I think around here. Let's see if that looks centered. Yes, that should be perfectly centered. So I'm not sure if I want to use white, although that would be cute. The white would be cute. Um, I don't have a burgundy. I don't want red. So yes, I'll use white. So we need to get the box or front, depending where it lands. A male and a female and two of those so we're all set okay so I'm going to line this up I had mentioned about two up okay so I'm just going to push that through make sure it's open There we go. Make sure you push the pick all the way through and then put on your, your second part. Make sure that's on nice and secure and then we're just going to press it on. good. Yeah, the white will be cute. I think I like the white. That will be cute. Okay, so we'll just line it up where we want it. I want it four up. Four of the pattern up. So I make my little mark. And I'll push through again.
make sure the little spike or pick is all the way through. We'll put on the other half of the snap. Push it on securely. And then we'll put this through. It might be a little difficult because I have lots of fabric there, but we'll get it and push. And there we go. That works perfectly. We're all set. Finish with that. And we're done. So I hope you've enjoyed this video and that you found it easy to follow. I'm going to add my design space link and the video link into my Facebook posts and you can get the project there. Please like this video and subscribe to my YouTube channel and thank you for watching.